Als der Film zu Ende war. When the film was over, I was so happy. I went home in such a wonderful state of happiness. It was one of the most beautiful days of my life. In meinem Leben. Und während ich da im Film. And the way I sat there during the film, I was very impressed and touched by what I saw and heard. But the most important thing was a feeling of joy. I was so impressed by the many healings that the people in the film spoke about. After nine years of production, the film was finally finished. Most important were the many eyewitnesses from that time and selections from the archive which were incorporated into the film. Over 80 eyewitness accounts were recorded, representing an extraordinary collection. Over 50 of them were used to make this film an impressive testimony about Bruno Gröning. And? Heavens. I don't understand it. It appears to be all gone. I already told you, Bruno Gröning healed me. You can't be serious. Yes, I am. Since I went to him the first time, I haven't had any pain anymore. But, but that just can't be. You can see for yourself. The main thing is that I'm healthy. Doctor, could you please... Yeah, it was so that what happened was that these healings occurred and more and more were being reported. At first this surprised me, but then I realized the film is almost like a community hour, where a person is reconnected with the divine and the force begins to flow. And many people report that they can feel the tingling sensation which is spoken about in the film. And then naturally the Heilstrom flows, and they're so occupied with the good while watching the film, that in the end these healings simply have to occur, just like they do during the community hours. I have a friend, and for many years, she and her husband wanted to have a baby, but she never got pregnant. Medically, they tried everything, but nothing worked. The only other alternative was in vitro fertilization, which she didn't want to do. And then the Bruno Gröning film came, and they both went to see it. Toward the end of the film, Bruno Gröning is seen on a photograph with a child. My friend said silently, Please, Bruno, I ask you one last time, if it is right for me, let me get pregnant. Yeah, after the film they went home, the feelings arose, and nine months later, she bore a healthy baby girl. Her name is Tessa. Tessa heißt sie. In 2002, my mother was the first to come to the Circle of Friends, through my aunt. Shortly afterward, my father and my brother were introduced to the teaching, and then my sister-in-law was introduced. My brother was healed of asthma and ivy, doubting Thomas just observed. As a scientist, I was too intellectual for this, I was getting in my own way. But for the sake of peace, I did go so far as to sit down with the family and do Einstellen with them. Okay, I did feel a tingling in my fingers. I thought to myself, maybe because of the way I'm holding my hands, my fingers fell asleep, and that's why they're tingling. At home, it sometimes really went along the lines of me bolting out of the room the minute my family began talking about the circle of friends, because I just couldn't stand listening to it. My mother kept trying to get me to believe. She tried again and again, trying to talk me out of my prejudices. But it just wasn't meant to be. In 2004, the documentary was being shown in Nuremberg. My mother said, you work near Nuremberg, you live there. So now let's all go and see it together. Und da konnte ich natürlich dann auch nicht Nein sagen. 
And then, of course, I couldn't say no. Then we all went together to see the film, and from the very beginning, the film appealed to me. The whole story about Bruno Gröning, the many, many healings that one heard all went straight to my heart. And at the end of the third part, I still remember sitting there and feeling a warmth in my body, a real heat. By the end, I had the feeling you could have fried eggs on my hands. It was that hot. And then I knew, wow, that's it. Now I'm really going to go along and forget all my prejudices. I will also go to the circle of friends now and get introduced to the teaching. Back then, my mother was able to introduce me as she was already a community leader. Then I went to the community hours more and more regularly. And then in 2009, I was allowed to lead a community. Shortly after that, I also received a healing from hay fever. In the last few years, it's as though the flowers bloom just for me. I've been given such a zest for life through this, and that's why I now love to go hiking in the mountains here in Filtsmoors. It's simply a dream and a huge gift for me. And a riesen Geschenk for me. From childhood on, our daughter Bettina suffered from atopic eczema, and we'd gone to various doctors. All we were ever given were ointments. We changed our diet, which brought some relief, but the problem never went away. Then, at the age of 17, she came to the circle of friends. A few months later, the documentary film was being shown, so I invited her to come and see it. She really wished to be free of this burden. After the first part of the film, she had a reaction on the back of both hands. They turned very red and splotchy, and then they began to itch severely. She came to me saying, Mom, look what's happening. And I said, this is just a reaction. And now believe that everything will turn out well. And by the end of the film, it was simply all gone. The whole rash was gone. The itching was gone. The skin was still a bit taut, but she felt she was free, felt that the problem had really gone. She was 18 at the time. She's been free of it for three years, and it never came back. Don't think about your ailments. Observe your body and ask yourself, what is happening in my body? The moving Traberhof scenes in the documentary film were filmed here, in this very place. I am not here to hold big speeches, but to mediate help and healing. Ich bekam Februar 15 years ago, in February 1997, I was asked to take pictures of the place where this film was to be made. But at that time I didn't have a camera and was wondering where I could get one. I knew there was a friend who lived in the area where this event would take place. And I asked her to go there with me. And all of a sudden, we saw this house. It happened so suddenly. All of a sudden, it was there. The whole area and this building looked so much like the Traberhof. And I said, that's where we have to go. That's the right place. And so they came from everywhere 
from Hamburg, Sweden, Switzerland, and from Austria. Von der Schweiz, von Österreich, die kamen They came by the busload. They wanted to be there, and no journey was too long for them. And the singing of the hymn, Great God, we praise thee, that was so powerful. So much power came across when the 3,000 friends sang that hymn. And they didn't sing it just once. They practiced it over and over. You could feel a vibration. There was a palpable force. It was indescribable. It was so wonderful. It was an experience that I can't even begin to put into words. I can still feel it today when I watch the film how it went through and through me when the hymn was sung. Nine years ago, in April 2004, I went to see the documentary film. I didn't know anything about the Bruno Gröning Circle of Friends, and certainly nothing about the healings. And then I got a wonderful healing, which I noticed three days later. I had very severe upper arm and shoulder pain. I had had this for eight years, the last two being so bad, that I couldn't even move my arm anymore. I could only hold it like this. I couldn't move it to the front or back, to the right. I couldn't even carry my handbag. My whole life was very restricted because of this, and I needed help around the house and with all sorts of other things. I wasn't able to hold a glass of water or anything else in my hand. I always used my left hand, and I had to move my whole body when reaching for something. Sometimes I even had to support my hand while eating in order to raise the spoon to my mouth. One evening, three days after watching the documentary film, I reached for a glass of water, and when I put it down again, I noticed that I was able to move my arm without the help of my left hand. I did it two more times, and then I said to my husband, Look, Hans, I can move my arm. And he immediately said, Woman, you have received the healing. And then it was like I was paralyzed. I wasn't able to speak or to say a single word. And he said, Say something, say something, be happy. And then this overwhelming joy which paralyzed me, that's the only way to describe it, loosened up. And then I said, thank you, dear God, thank you, dear Bruno. I was able to accept it right away, and I knew that this was the healing. Joy in life, in a way which I didn't know anymore, has returned, and a deep feeling of contentment has filled my heart. I used to be irritable and sad because I didn't have any kind of life anymore. Life was just passing by. On Mondays, I was fearful, wondering how the week at work would go. I lived in fear the whole time. And then, suddenly, everything was gone. And nine years later, it's still that way, 
the way it was three days after the film, when I realized that I had been healed. I can do everything in the garden again. I dig, I carry huge boxes of wood into the house, and I have to walk quite a long distance from the woodshed to the house. And every time I lift one of these boxes and set off, I always say, thank you, dear Bruno, thank you. It makes me so happy. And I chop the wood, make kindling, because we still heat the house with a wood stove. And I stand there chopping wood for two hours without getting tired. And nothing hurts. And I am so full of energy and joy. I give thanks every single day that I got to know this teaching. It's a heartfelt desire that people should receive this invitation. I often went along too. And then, when you get back home, you notice that it's really done you good as well. You feel the energy and the satisfaction of having done something good. And then the feedback. I thank you with all my heart for dropping the flyer into my mailbox. I found a flyer in my mailbox, and then I went to this documentary film about Bruno Gröning. Bruno Gröning? At that time, I'd had severe migraines for about 30 years. And for the same 30 years, I'd also had severe chronic back pain. And the minute the film started, I forgot everything. I was just so deeply connected to Bruno. I had also suffered inwardly and thought that something so terrible could happen here on our earth. And then God, our Father, sends a man directly who wants to help all people, and he wasn't allowed to do it. That really hurt me deep inside. Yeah, and then I forgot all about my pain. And I thought, I'll go and take a look. Previously, I hadn't been able to sit for very long. I didn't think that I'd be able to stay until the end. But it was so interesting that I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to always feel this love that I felt in the film. I had been looking for this love all my life and never found it before. And now, all of a sudden, I saw these eyes in the film and I felt this love. When I came home, my family immediately noticed that something was different. My daughter asked me, where have you been? And when she looked into my eyes, she asked, Mom, are you in love? Yeah, that was so sweet. I'll never forget it. That night, I slept through until morning for the first time, without pain and without medication. I didn't need anything. Yeah. I have had this healing for seven years. Everything is gone. For more than 30 years, I had migraines and severe back pain. Es war immer schwer, diesen Film in die Kinos zu bekommen. It was always difficult to get this film shown in a cinema. 
In 2003, we discovered that there weren't any cinemas in Kassel that wanted to screen the film. But that was precisely at the time when the technology was available for us to show the film in a different way, namely with DVD, enabling us to show the film in good quality on a screen using a video projector. Letztlich auf die Leinwand bringen in in guter Qualität. It was a terrific success. Many people came, and during the intermissions they were very well looked after. So many healings were reported at that time. Seldom did as many healings occur after that. We had a great number of them within a very short period. I believe there were six within two or three screenings, where people really were liberated from long-standing suffering. And of course, we then had a brand new opportunity to bring this film to the world. Suddenly, our film boxes no longer weighed 200 pounds, but had shrunk down to a little case weighing three ounces. That means we were now able to have about a thousand films for the weight of just one before. Welcome. I'm happy that I may help with the documentary film showings. And it was because of this that I saw one woman come in. She turned up pretty much toward the end and went to the first row of seats and was holding someone's hand. I thought, this could be a mother and daughter. The daughter was maybe 50 years old. As is the custom after the film, people were asked if anyone had felt anything. Nobody wanted to say a word, and then the daughter said, but mother, you can lift your arm up, which you couldn't do at all before. It was fantastic. I was so happy about it. Everybody was happy about it. Yeah, <laughs> was... Now I'm looking forward to the next showing which I can help at. The thing was, due to massive panic attacks with heart symptoms, I had the feeling I was going to die. This feeling was so overpowering that it accompanied me all the time for three months. And I wasn't able to get over it. It lasted from morning to evening. And it was also very bad during the night because I felt as if my heart was jumping around inside my chest. I simply had the feeling and the fear that I was going to die. My daughter was 14 years old at the time. I was living alone with her and was divorced. You can imagine the emotional impact of this fear. What will happen to my child? and all the other thoughts associated with this. And then I went to see the film in October. I was so focused on the film. This film moved me deeply. It totally captivated me and appealed to my heart and soul in such a way that I really forgot everything that was happening around me. I felt a strong power I felt pain in my chest radiating out into my left hand right down to my fingers. When the film was over, I went home happy in a very special way. It was one of the most beautiful days of my life. After that, everything was gone. The panic attacks, the awful things I had experienced for three months, all that disappeared as of that day. I'm infinitely grateful for that. I realized that's what I had always been looking for. I was excited and enthusiastic and wanted to inspire my family as well. 
But it didn't work. I immediately encountered resistance and even derision from my son and daughter-in-law and my oldest grandson as well. They even made fun of it. Then, in 2005, the film came to Frankfurt Oder. It was shown in Frankfurt Oder on December 5th, and, as my birthday is in December, I had the idea to ask them to come to see the film as a birthday present for me. We were sitting at home, all nice and cozy. My children were there, and I asked them, have you got something for my birthday yet? And they said, no, what would you like? And I said, I have only one wish, and that is that you go and see the documentary film. They weren't very enthusiastic, but they went. My husband didn't go, but my son and daughter-in-law and my oldest grandson. Back then, we still had a book table at the film showings. I stood behind the book table, and during the first intermission, my daughter-in-law came up and apologized to me. This was very important for me, because in the past, she had always ridiculed everything a little bit. After seeing the film, whenever there were discussions and my husband said something negative, my son interrupted and said, Dad, stop it. That's Mom's path, and she's taking it. Since then, everything is fine, and I haven't had any more opposition from my family. It was very painful the time before Bruno, because I was going through a very difficult separation with my husband. And it came unexpected, and I was found myself alone with the four children. And at the same time that he left, uh, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And they told me there was nothing they could do for me. And uh, I felt just devastated when I heard the, the diagnosis. And also because I had always been a very active person. I was a Canadian champion in, in Taekwondo. I was North American champion in karate. I was second in the world in French kickboxing. So I was very active. And just the thought of one day being in the wheelchair and having somebody else take care of me was just... I found that very, very difficult to handle. I didn't want to continue with my life. At that time, I was so depressed. I was All I was doing was I was looking through this paper and I was cutting out... I have a whole collection of articles where assisted suicide was legal. <laughs> I was looking for a way out of this life. Uh, I didn't want my family, I didn't want my children to be taking care of me. I didn't want people to see me getting worse. But uh, until... My friend told me about the Bruno's film. I really had no hope for the future. I went to see the film in March of 2010. And there I found hope. I, it just stuck with me that what Bruno said, there is no incurable. And then during the film, I saw people healed of multiple sclerosis. And I said, my gosh, then this could be possible for me too. And I felt this incredible energy flowing through my body, something I'd never, ever felt before. And this great love coming from Bruno Groening. And I, my, just my outlook completely changed. And I, I found myself filled with energy again. And so I, I, I took Bruno's advice, I listened to my body, and a month after I saw the film, I stopped my medication completely, against my doctor's advice. And after they tested me about eight, nine months later in physiotherapy and occupational therapy, and I tested at 106%. So I actually got stronger off the medication, and I got stronger since I've, you know, since I joined Bruno. And they said, the physiotherapist says it's so rare that they see this, that the patients would actually get stronger and, and more endurance and more dexterity. All my values went up and they test me every year since then and it hasn't gone down. It stayed at 106% and I'm still able to do all the things I love to do. I, uh, I ride horses, I jump horses, I kickbox, I run and I take care of my children all by myself, four children. 
and I feel full of energy and my, my life is full of joy. And uh, I became a community leader because uh, when I did the Einstein, I asked Bruno, when I was going through hard times, I asked him, Bruno, please give me the strength to take care of my four children. And in return, I would help others with your guidance. And so when my community leader asked me if I want to become a community leader, I said yes right away because he had kept his promise to me. I didn't think it would come so fast, though. I didn't think that I would be a leader. Uh, like It was basically less than a year after I, I joined. I would become a community leader. And now I'm leader for, for three communities. And it, it's the joy of my life to help others heal and see the joy on their faces when they get their healing. It's been a great blessing to have known Bruno. He, he saved my life. <laughs> For me, the film is something really momentous. In the final analysis, it is a divine help for mankind. It's something that helps people to concern themselves with the divine, so that they again become conscious of what is possible for God, and that they open themselves to it, include it in their lives. It gives people the chance to get this back again. Menschen die Chance, das wieder zu bekommen. <laughs>